All right, you guys ready to get going? Yeah. We've got a lot to cover. Last session of the day, you got a little room left? Yeah. All right. What we're going to do today in our session is I'm basically going to I'll give you a little bit of background, uh, give you a little bit of information about uh, WooCommerce, why we love it so much, why we use it on all of our client e-commerce sites uh, that allow us to recommend that decision for them. Um, and also take you through an entire uh, installation that's basically flat out um, empty and go all the way through to processing a simple transaction on PayPal. So um, let's get to it. So. Um, who am I? Uh, my name is Matt Nelson. I'm the uh, Interactive Strategy Director for First Tracks Marketing Group. Uh, we're a, a full-service digital marketing agency uh, based out of Concord, New Hampshire, and we have a second office in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Um, we've been doing WordPress development and design uh, for six years, uh, in total uh, 10 plus, um, so we've been through with the tides for sure. Um, we've worked on all sizes of sites, um, you know, big, huge, you know, content magazine sites like Yankee Magazine, all the way down to the local, you know, Whoopie Pie Bakery Cafe in Newburyport, Massachusetts, Chicago Baking. So, um, you know, no bit, no, no sites too big, no sites too small. Um, you know, at the very core of what we do and how we do it, we're always, you know, big on supporting the uh, the community itself and. You know, keeping true to the core of WordPress itself and not building things in a way that creates, you know, update issues or, or you know, problems for you to maintain your sites as a client because it's your site. You should be able to use it any way you want. Um, <clears throat> why do we love WooCommerce? Um, we love WooCommerce because it's extremely flexible. It's easy to design. It's easy to template. Um, it makes it really easy for our clients to run and manage their sites, empowers them to manage their products, create their specials, run their coupons. Um, WooCommerce as an entity, as its evolution, has come light years in the two years that it's been around. Um, it was originally a Jigo shop. It was forked um, two years ago and built on its own uh, core platform from that core, and they've never looked back. I mean, the growth of it's been huge, which we'll get into in a second. Um, WooCommerce integrates really cleanly with just about everything. I don't care if you're using WordPress 2014 or even 2011. WooCommerce will work perfectly in any of anything that you stick in it. Um, it looks pretty good without a lot of extra effort. You know, you don't have to do a ton of custom coding or, or programming to get it to look, you know, like it belongs in your shop or your store or your site. Um, the the uh, analytics that are offered through the platform phenomenal. Uh, we'll look into that. I have some live stores that I'm going to walk you through at the end of the presentation just to give you a more flavor of what an active store looks like and what kind of data you can scrape from it. Um, and at the very bottom there, the most important, makes it makes it easy for our clients to make money online. And who doesn't like that? So, what's new? Um, last year I gave this talk uh, at the 2013 WordCamp, and since then, um, actually right after that WordCamp, they dropped version 2.1 of Woo Themes. Um, and in uh, July, we're up to 2112. So you can, again, you see how active that support uh, uh, line is on this. And at the time that we had done this presentation last year, that had been downloaded 1.6 million times. It's been downloaded over 4 million times now in less than a year. So, in terms of momentum of where this is going, you know, there's, there's barely another system that can hold a candle to this, in my opinion. Um, WooCommerce, it now powers 17% of all e-commerce websites, which is up in the 380k range, which even I was like, you know, that's nuts, but that's great to see the growth. Um, there are massive amounts of extensions, uh, and in turn with that, when they released the 2.1 version of WooCommerce, they included the RESTful API, which has made it much, much easier for developers to add on, you know, dynamic data sets and exports and feeds and uh, also component integrations for extensions. So the growth of what the, the community has been able to provide as add-ons for what WooCommerce can do for you as bolt-ons and additions and new gateways and you know different ways to sell different kinds of products. You know, Again, as much as the platform has been downloaded and exploded in the last year, the amount of extensions that are available now compared to last year has about doubled as well. Um, let's see. <coughs> Uh, in addition to those packages, uh, there's also great additions that WooThemes as a provider and that sole you know, proprietor and creator of this, this uh, system, they have some great uh, package pieces that you can bolt onto it to do things like courses, 
schedule bookings, um, sell tickets for events. Uh, I don't know if anyone here is familiar with Events Calendar Pro at all. That's a great events management package done by Modern Tribe. That all integrates <laughs> together with Blue Tickets and WooCommerce. You can sell stuff, you know, run your, uh, uh, track your, you know, uh, usage, set caps. You know, it's it's just a fantastically, you know, uh, organized way to manage all that stuff. But the best that we've found at this point. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to dive right in now, so that's kind of the, the overview here. Um, what I'd like everyone to do, if uh, you saw in the first slide, uh, if you want to ask questions as I'm going through this, please just tweet uh, hashtag WCBOSWOO, and we'll get to all of them at the very end, because I just want to run through this, and then we can go back and visit anything you want along the way, because there's a fair amount of things we have to play through here. Um, so obviously, First thing, uh, you do need hosting. For a basic WooCommerce shop setup install, you don't need anything special, especially if you're not going to process your transactions directly on the site. So if you just want to use like standard PayPal, you don't need an SSL certificate or anything like that. So you can use just your basic shared hosting with Bluehost, GoDaddy, whoever you want. If you want to process inline seamless transactions, you will need an SSL certificate. It's slightly more expensive. It's like 70 bucks a year and a little bit more configuration. Um, we're not going to go through that today, but just so you're aware. Um, <clears throat> when I do any, any sort of basic WooCommerce install, um, four main plugins that we use, uh, WooDojo, again, another WooCommerce product. Um, installing that first before you even get into any of this stuff is great because WooCommerce is one of the add-ons that comes with WooDojo. So if you want to add WooCommerce, might as well throw WooDojo in there, and then it's a single-click install for WooCommerce. Um, WooDojo also has a few other bells and whistles like social media plugins, um, you know, SoundCloud, you know, file integrations, uh, custom sidebars, stuff like that. Um, WooCommerce Google Analytics is exactly what you think it is. Allows you to track your sales in Google Analytics. It's pretty important. Um, and WordPress SEO, which I would assume most people know is one of the best SEO plugins out there. So, gotta be able to get Google to find your stuff. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm, I've got a um, flat install and we're just going to walk through the settings panel for WooCommerce and I'm going to show you all the bits and pieces that go into configuring your store and then we'll create a product and I'll show you how that all interfaces with the front end and then how you can then disperse your products throughout your site and we'll process the transaction. Do you need that full screen? Uh, we're actually not going to use the slides anymore. <laughs> we're going to use the site that I have. Um, if you want the slides, you can go to our website, firsttracksmarketing.com. On the home page, there's a big button there, uh, midway down, and all the slides are downloadable from SlideShare, and all the links are active, so you can go directly to the plugins and everything that I'm suggesting in here. Um, so what you're looking at, this is just a, a flat, um, pretty raw install of uh, Canvas by Woo Themes. Um, I chose to use this for the demo just because, uh, like many themes that are come pre-prepared for WooCommerce, they have some additional, you know, bells and whistles like, you know, carts added into the header. Um, you know, shop templates that are pre-done, uh, product templates that have a little bit more organizational organization to them. It'll still work with any theme, but this makes it just that much cleaner. If you go into any of the theme marketplaces that are out there, they'll clearly indicate, you know, built for WooCommerce, and then you'll know right out of the gate that you won't have to really, you get that much more customization options and uh, polish with it. Um, so, on the back end, let's get into the settings. Not that WooCommerce. So we go into WooCommerce and then settings. This is you have to bear with me. This is incredibly awkward trying to do this <laughs> um, So we're going to start in the general tab. Um, what we need to go through is just define where are you that you're selling your stuff. Um, do you want to sell all over the world or just the United States or wherever? Um, do you want to enable your API again? You know you're not building any big data customizations or you know bolt-ons yourself. Uh, you don't have to have that active. It doesn't hurt anything if it is, though. Um, the site-wide store notice text, that's you can put a message up if your store is like not fully live and people are going to hit it. You can just put a message up that says, you know, anything that you do here isn't going to be processed. Don't worry about it. Um, currency set, so again, what country are you in? How, what kind of currency is your store going to run? How do you want to position your stuff to look in the store for uh, purchasing? You know, decimal separators. Very exciting stuff. Um, 
the light box, again, it comes into play on the, the product page. When you click on your image, when you set up your product, do you want to see a big blown up version of it? You know, people want to get a better view. Um, so that's general. <coughs> um, your products tab, uh, there's two. And one thing I would point out right out of the, the shoot here, uh, in the newer version of WooCommerce, they made a lot of effort to go through and adjust their layouts and uh, interfaces to marry more closely with the newer versions of WordPress so that, again, so when 4 comes out, you know, in, I don't know, a couple weeks now, um, this is all going to emulate whatever that additional interface adjustments were. And we all know with 3.8, there was a big shift towards the responsive uh, backbone that was supplied in there. So all of this has been redone uh, in the newer version of WooCommerce. So when you get into the actual tabs themselves, you'll see that there's there's sub-items here that you will click through and it gives you additional option panels, which is something that we find a lot of people just miss because it's kind of tucked away there at the top. Um, the uh, product options stuff, we've got uh, how do you want it. A lot of this goes in and it's preset when it installs. So the, the initial time that you install WooCommerce, um, it puts in a little dialog box at the top and it says, do you want to install the pages that are required to run WooCommerce? And you just click a button and say yes. And then it presets um, all of the stuff in here. So for instance, you know, what page is your shop page? WooCommerce made your shop page for you when you installed it. So you don't even have to configure that, create the page, and make the connection. Um, but if you ever wanted to change it to something else, you could. If you didn't want to call it shop, you could call it store or you know, gallery. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but that's where you would adjust it. Um, the uh, page display. So this dis these display options have to do with the actual um, catalog itself. So what do you want to show when somebody goes to your shop? Do you want to show just the products? Or do you want to show the subcategories of what products you have and how much stuff exists in them? Or do you want to show both? Um, I'm just going to go with products because we're not going to create a whole catalog. <laughs> um, the default category display, again, so when you get into a category, what do you want to show? Do you want to show products or do you want to show another subdivision of categories? Again, it just depends on how complicated your catalog is. Um, it defaults to products because the assumption is that you not, you know, you have main categories and then products in your categories. But excuse me, if your uh, store is more complex than that, then you can adjust it there. Um, the default product sorting, uh, Woo uh, Themes has um, some uh, basic uh, catalog sorting options that you can set up, and that happens again on that catalog page. So if you want to. Um, uh, you know, default to price lowest to highest or highest to lowest or alphabetical or whatever. It's, again, it's up to you how you want to set that up. Um, the Ajax uh, cart buttons on archives, when you click add to cart, do you want it to have happen live and then dynamically add it to the cart or do you want it to actually load the page and then boot people over to the cart is basically what that means. Um, your weights and dimensions, those are important. Again, if you're going to get into shipping, so you know what kind of stuff are you sending around? Are you going to have to ship things to people? Um, you know, how do you want to you know run that measurement? So you get the basic standardized uh, measurements there. Um, product ratings, exactly what it says. Do you want to allow people to rate your stuff? Yes or no? Uh, it's basically like comments for a post. Um, uh, and then this is where you set your uh, your catalog images. So. Do, what do you want your basic details image to look like size-wise? What do you want your catalog image to look like size-wise and your single product uh, image? And the thumbnails, um, those are for like widgets and stuff like that. Like how big do you want the little square to be in your widget displays? Um, if you're doing downloadable products like PDFs or you know ebooks or whatever, um, you can force people to create an account and have to log in to access the information as opposed to getting a link in their receipt. Um, which again, if you're trying to create community and create repeat buyers, you know, it's not a bad thing to do either. Um, <clears throat> inventory, so if you want to track stock, that's all built in too um, at the product level. So what that means basically is that what exactly what it sounds like. So if you're out of stock on an item because somebody bought all of it uh, and someone tries to go and buy it, uh, you can tell the system, do you want to allow back orders? 
Um, and then that'll send you notifications to the store to say, you know, you need to make sure you get X product to this person because they paid you for it. Um, and then you can manage communications from there versus not allowing people to buy stuff that's out of stock. I mean, that's just uh, options and configurations here. So again, you can hide. So if something's out of stock, you can hide it completely automatically without having to worry about, oh, geez, I got to go in and not publish that because it's zero. Um, <coughs> Um, taxes. So, up in New Hampshire, don't worry about this one. But, um, but we're not in New Hampshire, so we got to set tax rates, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. Um, we are going to enable taxes, so uh, I'm going to, and this is pretty standard. You enter the taxes, um, exclusive, not uh, exclusive of tax. So, the price is the price, and the tax is the tax, and it calculates that in the card. Um, and then you just tell it, you know, where do you want to calculate the tax back based on, um, you know, do you want to put, you know, classes on, uh, tax classes on card items, um, yeah, itemize, yeah, again, so the, the majority, all of these options here, it's just about how you want the tax to be displayed and calculated when you're at the card level, and we'll walk through that. I've already set up ahead of time um, standard rate tax for Massachusetts. Did I get that right? 6%? Is it 6.25? It's a 2.5. Five. Five. Two five. Oh, two five. Two five. Two five. <laughs> some, some areas it's 7. Oh. It depends on the time. We'll go with 6.25. I was trying to cut everybody a break. <laughs> um, so when you set up your, your tax rates, you can do, you know, you can do multiples, obviously, um, but it's usually based off of wherever you're based out of, and that's you know, the tax rates that are applied when you know, the sales happen and people enter their information to purchase the products. Um, your country code, again, it's pretty straightforward how this is set up. The zip and postal code, if there are other areas, like you said, that are 7%, not 6.25, you can put in zip code ranges um, to apply those properly to those areas of the state if need be. Um, and, and what's nice about WooCommerce, you'll see question marks pretty much everywhere. And there's great helpful tips along the way that really just verbatim explain all of these things pretty straightforward. Um, we're not going to get into reduced zero rates or zero rate, rate rates. <laughs> um, checkout. WooCommerce has like 70 something payment gateways available. Um, I'm not going to go through them all. That would be way too boring for me to look at. So, uh, what we're going to do is just PayPal standard because I don't have an SSL certificate site that we're building and that wouldn't be safe. So uh, you can do you can do uh, pay by check if you want to. People will just mail you stuff and they'll process orders. Um, but what we typically use uh, more, most frequently with our sites, uh, Stripe is great. Who, who is, everyone's heard of Stripe before? Not everybody? Stripe is awesome because there's no cost to set up the account and you only pay for it when you process your transactions. So something, and it's seamless. So get an SSL certificate, sign up for a Stripe account, and you can process transactions straight on your site, you know, probably within 20 minutes. Um, it's the simplest, easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Um, the other, there's other ones like Authorize.net or PayPal Pro, but those ones, you're going to have to pay a setup fee, you're going to have to pay a monthly fee, plus the transactions fee. So um, we haven't had any sort of security or issues using Stripe, and it's worked out great for so many of our clients. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out. Um, but what we're going to run through is just PayPal. And PayPal comes with this right out of the box. So if you have a PayPal account, um, just a basic standard account, all you need to do is just click Enable PayPal and plug in your email and assign who the receiver email is going to be for the transaction as it gets processed. And that's it. Um, you can set up a sandbox if you want to run test transactions and stuff. We're not going to do that today, but it's available if you need it. Um, and if there's any problems and things don't right, run well, or you have an issue getting the payments to PayPal, the logging, uh, debug log here is really helpful. So when you run the process transaction with WooCommerce, it'll spit out a whole bunch of stuff in the transactions page. So at least you have something when you go to PayPal and say, well, this didn't work, and this is what I'm seeing, you know, what's wrong? Um, you know, at least you have some backup there to give you some feedback. Um, Shipping. Uh, WooCommerce has 
all the standard integrations with shipping that you would want to have to ship your stuff. So USPS, UPS, FedEx, all that stuff. Um, we're not going to go through that today. We're just going to do basic flat rate. Um, you can do flat rate free. There's a great table rate shipping extension for WooCommerce, which allows you to create um, zones. Uh, so you can split the country up into a couple different pieces, either by state or zip code ranges, and then you can assign um, tiered pricing levels based on how much product people buy. So it's a nice manual way for you to manage your shipping expense. So if you want to try and build a little bit more profit kickback from the, the orders that you ship, um, it's easier for you to go in and like manage those on a micro level rather than what you're typically doing with USPS or UPS or FedEx it dynamically just generates the rates based on whatever the uh, dimensions are of your product and the boxes are that you make available for how you want to ship. So it's like international, ground, you know, priority, whatever. And there's like a zillion different options there. Um, but there's different expenses associated with that. So it's just all about a, what mixture of that sort of setup is best for your business in terms of how you're going to make the most profit from the, the shipping process today including handling and all that stuff. Um, so what I've enabled for the demo today is flat rate and free shipping. Um, what's nice is that it kind of groups everything down here. These links over here, they basically do the same thing that these do up here. So I'm just going to go down and set my, my flat rate. And flat rate, um, um, enabled flat rate, uh, I can title it whatever I want. So they don't. Know. <laughs> um, and then I'm, I'm only going to ship to people in the U.S. Uh, and we're only selling to people in the U.S. We set that up on the, the very first general screen where we assigned uh, where we wanted to do sales. Um, is it taxable? Sure. Um, is there a base cost per order you can set? So when you ship anything, it's going to you know it's going to cost you like four dollars. You can just plug that in there, and that just gets added on to whatever the shipping rate cost is that you set below. Um, and then down here, what I've done with flat rate, what's nice is you can create what are called shipping classes. Um, shipping classes are uh, ways that you can group products together when you create them to say anything. So let's say we have, when we're going to go through this, I'm going to have a tool and I'm going to have a shirt. I could have a shipping class for all shirts and I could have a shipping class for all tools. So tools that ship are X amount more expensive than shirts that ship. And that way you can assign those classes to all those types of products in your in your store. And if you want to adjust it then, like oh, I'm losing I'm losing my shirt on my shirts, you know, I gotta throw in another three bucks there every time I ship a shirt so that I don't lose my shirt. What's the difference between the first uh cost and have a little bit of other cost order and the camera Um you can set a flat just doesn't matter what you're ordering, regardless of class or how much. It's just a flat fee that gets tacked on, in addition to whatever else that you're setting for options below. Um, again, if you're going to do if you're going to do dynamic shipping with a plugin, you don't really set that because it's going to be based off of your dimensions and like how much product you're putting in your cart and so on and so forth. Th this is a little bit different where you're just saying, you know what, shipping is whatever to me, I'm going to make sure that I don't ever spend more than, you know, 10 bucks. You know, for me personally, it really only costs me six, you know, and that's what you're building into the price of that transaction per, per person. Does that make sense? I didn't set one there. Again, you can just skip that and you could go to the classes and say, you know, I'm going to run my classes and for clothing, the cost is eight and I'm going to charge a handling fee of one dollar. So it's nine bucks total. But if you didn't want to go through all of that, you could just say the cost for shipping is ten bucks. Done. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Oh, so that doesn't add that to these. It would. It would add it to that. So make it exactly. So again, it's just a question of how you want to mix it. Can you set it up for free shipping at a certain price point? You can. Um, that gets into coupons. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Usually, uh, just more than any one of the costs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it depends on the mixture of what your you know product matrix is. So again, th this is all up to you about how you want to set up those price breaks. So 
Um, there are a bunch of extensions that add in a lot of that functionality too, that if you look into like um, specials and, and uh, product promotions and stuff like that, it gives you a ton more flexibility and uh, uh, target points where you can set baselines and breaks like that, where it's like if someone adds uh, you know, X amount of dollars to the cart, you know, zero the shipping, regardless. You can do it without coupon. Huh? You can do it without coupon. Yeah, it's in the, well, I, we typically use coupons for it. Yeah, you can use it for both. And it's in the, it's in the, the configurations here. Free shipping requires, free shipping coupon, a minimum order amount, and or, and or a combination of the two. So, you can set, you know, it's $50. And if I accrue 50 bucks, free shipping. I'll see. It's a good deal. <laughs> uh, accounts. Oh, I didn't skip anything in shipping. No, I went to all the shipping. Uh, you know, only other stuff in shipping here to point out. You know, if you were sh if you were doing international, there are options for if you want to configure different shipping rates overseas. Um, local delivery. So if you want somebody to, you know, if you're going to drive it to them, there's different options for that versus if you want someone to come to you and pick it up, which obviously there's no cost for that, but it's an option that they have to be able to select to say, yeah, I just bought that shirt and I'm going to come to your store and get it tomorrow, you know. Um, accounts, uh, again, this is one of the preset pages, so when you install it, it creates the My Account page, you don't have to connect that. Um, all of these addresses and uh, the URLs that go along with this, that is all dynamically generated when you install WooCommerce, so you don't have to worry about figuring out what those are. Um, and then you have options to enable people to create accounts when they check out. So is your site a membership site that people have to be logged in to access stuff? Um, are they doing downloads that you want them to have accounts for? Um, you know, creating an account with your site is nice too because the My Account functionality of WooCommerce provides them a page where they can view their orders, edit their shipping address, um, you know, cancel, renew, you know, if you're running subscriptions, so on and so forth. So uh, it can be handy stuff and you can have it password automatically generated if you want. Or you can allow them to set it themselves, it'll measure strength, you know, if you have blocks on, you know, weak versus strong passwords. Um, Emails, there's a whole bunch of email templates. Um, with WooCommerce, it actually makes it incredibly easy for you to customize color, upload a nice header graphic for your email, and it looks like this is very boring. I didn't go through it and customize my email, but you get the idea. Um, okay. um, so I just assigned, you know, who's it coming from, who do I want the address to be, um, if I had a, you know, an image in my media gallery, I could pop it in there. Uh, and then you can color customize. Just it's got a nice little jQuery selector. I can change the. There's all the other instances of how the order process goes. So uh, you can choose to enable or disable any of these uh, response emails from your, your shop. Uh, it's totally up to you. Uh, and then these are all all the options in here in terms of like what shows up in the subject line and what information gets sent. That's all pre-populated when you install WooCommerce. So if you want to make adjustments to this, you know you're more than capable of doing so. But uh, you know, it's really straightforward stuff. You just follow through. Um, you know, thank you for your order. Order is complete. Again, it's just that follow-up from when you're running those transactions. So, um, last one, integration. So, all you do is plug in. I added that plugin for WooCommerce Google Analytics. You have a Google Analytics page. Plug in your ID, um, and then add your uh, your tracking codes to all the events that happen with your shop, and then. Google Analytics to scrape all that data and show you your, you know, revenue measurement versus your actual product sales. It'll track what products are sold. It'll give you the funnel of where everything goes. It's just, it's very, extremely simple to be able to put all that together and just get a couple of checkboxes. So, those are all the basic settings. Uh, what we're going to do now is look at. So 
I've gone ahead and I've, I've pre-set two products in here, um, just to walk through this. Uh, the editing of the actual product data itself, again, another really nice thing about how WooThemes and WooCommerce tends to work and evolve is that they're always looking to build more and more off of how the core of WordPress works. So when you look at this, it's like, oh, it's just like editing a page or a post. Um, the, let's, let's open up the product page itself just so I can walk you through that in here. Okay. So there are a couple different parts. Um, the actual description up here, which I've always felt this is kind of backwards, but this is how it is out of the box. So um, this text up here, that's not that text. The actual description, that's the main description. It shows up below the product in the description tab. So the idea is obviously it's a tab, so you can stick a bunch of stuff in there and have the other stuff like reviews and product specs show up there. And then this is the short description for your product, which is down below. Uh, a lot of times when we set these shops up for our clients, we'll actually... Oh, we can't drag that I wish we could just flip-flop those because it would make more sense. But, um, I just that. Right. Um, below the short description, um, this is the main product uh, attributes editor for, for every piece. So what I did with the shirt, uh, this wonderful first track polo, um, is that I set up a variable product for this because I wanted to give you a peek into how variations work in WooCommerce because it's a pretty common thing. So like I got shirts and I got four colors of shirts and I got the sizes of shirts. So how would you configure that? Um, what we set up first, so when you first set up a new product, it's going to be set as simple. Um, but what I did was I changed it to variable. Um, I gave it, you know, a skew that can be whatever you want, whatever's relevant for you. Um, inventory, um, I'm going to enable stock, but because it's variable, we're going to manage the stock in the variations because I got three different colored shirts, each one of them a certain amount. Um, the shipping, again, I, I'm going to put that in the clothing shipping class. So that's how that's applied. Um, dimensions, again, because we're using flat rate, the dimensions are really irrelevant because it's not calculating off of that. But I pointed out only because the auto calculation stuff that works with um, USPS, FedEx, UPS, you have to have dimensions for it to calculate what you're shipping. Um, uh, linked products, um, this is particularly useful uh, where you can create uh, cross sells or upsells. And cross sells, they are, cross sells are things that when I go to the cart, I can tab other products to say, if you buy this shirt and it's in your cart and you go to checkout, I want these other things to appear in the cart that you can add to your cart before you check out. Versus upsells, which are things that appear at the bottom of the product page to say, you're looking at this shirt, you may also like this pair of pants and these shoes. Make sense? And what's nice about how those work too, they're autocomplete. So as you type the name, it'll just scan the database and pull up whatever's available. Um, if you don't set those, uh, something else to keep in mind too is that when you group stuff in similar categories, it'll automatically show related products at the bottom of things that exist in the same category. So this is almost like a way for you to override those categorical automatic relationships that are there to be a little bit more strategic about how you're trying to get people to buy certain. <laughs> um, attributes. So this is where, to create variations, we need attributes, and the attributes are the colors of the shirts. So what I did was, beforehand, um, there are, under products, there's attributes, and what I did was I created an attribute called colors, and then within that, uh, all right, so we got it. Um, so I created the, the uh, three colors, and those are in the attribute. And then because that's global, it's available for everything. And if I decided, like, oh, geez, I'm going to add, you know, white, yellow, green, I can come in here and add those, and then they'll be automatically available to every product in my shop. Um, 
Selected categories, same throw grade their post, same idea. Um, featured image, so that's what the product image is. Works in the, the category, works in the uh, details page, operates the pop-up as well, so you kind of make that the biggest one and then it scales to fit everything else. And then the actual variations then you can see within them I created a you know, there's a blue, there's a button there when you create your attributes, you save it, and then you say, I want to make these available for variations. If you click one button, link all variations, and it'll take everything that you threw in for attributes, and it'll automatically matrix everything out for you all at once. So if you had a second one, like sizes, it would do like red, small, large, medium. Blue, small, large, medium. And then each one of those, as I was saying before, stock-wise, I gave them a quantity and a price. So every variation of that product, I assign a price and a, and a stock amount to. So that when I go to the front end, I can choose the option for red, and then it spits out how many are there and what the price is, and then I can add that to my cart. And then there's the upsell of the tool. So if I wanted to add that to my cart too, it just, bam. <clears throat> adds it right into the total automatically all in the same I don't go anywhere else I don't load another page it's just seamless and it's a great way to add value to the, the process of checking out in your short store so then I'm gonna proceed to the checkout and it, one of the things also that we really love about this is that it's very direct and straightforward it's two steps I go to the product page I select what I want I go to the cart I check out done I fill it out I We've taken apart so many other e-com stores that are like six steps to go through and buy just like one little product. It's insane. So this is really straightforward. I'm going to go down, double check my order. It's $23.99. I'm going to use PayPal. I'm going to process to PayPal. And there you go. So PayPal has read the... Uh, the product that I just popped into WooCommerce, it took in all the additional pieces that I put in there. It looks like I had the, so there's my shipping flat rate that was applied to the class. There's my Swiss Army tool and my polo shirt, and I'm not going to bore you with filling that out. And I don't feel like paying $23 for those things, so I'm not going to. <laughs> not that they are great, but you know. Are those shirts one size so, all? So, uh, you know, that, it, it, I know we're running short on time, so, I, you know, this, I, I want to open it up to questions. I mean, that's basically the product setup, it runs through the transaction, the setup of the store, and then, you know, I'll answer questions. Let's go. Um, are cart items held in the session or in the database? Say that one more time. Are cart items held in the session or in the database? Session. The, the cart, carts uh, are held in the session, not in the database. Um, there's a really nifty plugin actually that'll show you abandoned carts and it'll like list it on the back end. Actually, that's something I want to show. You. Um, the uh, these are what your orders look like when they come in on the back end of, of uh, WooCommerce. This is a live shop that we have running, um, and then you can view all the details of that and edit it. Again, it's all integrated with the post types. And then the other thing that I want to show you is the reporting dashboard. So when you're in WooCommerce, it gives you, you can look at this year, last year, date ranges, by product, by category, um, you know, sales by category, you can track your coupons, you know, by usage. Um, you know, it's just a massive amount of flexibility uh, from a reporting standpoint. Digital products, or download products, mm -hmm. how's... You, you create the product and instead of, uh, instead of uh, variable or simple, it's virtual because there's no, there's no shipping or anything tied to it, and then you can actually apply the, uh, whatever the thing is that you want people to access via download, like a PDF. It gives you like a field where you can upload it. Oh, so you upload, so WooCommerce is dealing with actually the Yep, yep, and that's where the My Account page becomes really useful, is that, so, you know, if they, so again, here's my, my uh, thing. I don't want that, so I'm going to cancel. Um, so I've got my two canceled orders in there. If I had downloads or things that I could access, depending on the variables that you set, is it multiple? Is it one time? You know, if it's multiple, then I could come in here and get it again if I lost it. You know, and it's something I have to kind of do for. Um, anybody else? Yes, yeah, unfortunately. 
any, any sort of digital document, Word document, PDFs, Excel files, whatever, it's, uh, it's up to you. Um, you have a good uh, So in the variable products, you can put pictures in, and when you put the pictures in, yes. you change them, yep. they'll change. So yep. my question is, if you link, say you have a configuration, and then you have a color that yeah. you want to add, uh, I found it's difficult. You can't get it to change the configuration picture and color. Is that, do you have to link products to do that, or is it just not uh, out of the box capability? Well, I'm saying? Yeah, like you're trying to do three things at the same time. So you have yeah. three different configurations, A, B, C, and yeah. you got, you know, red, white, blue. So if you want B in blue, right. uh, you can click on it and you can yeah, see we, it in the colors. We've run into that problem too. We had like a uniform sales, uh, soccer uniform sales site, and they wanted to do like, you know, select the parts of your uniform and then have each part of it change yeah. as you go. And we we're actually we're in the process of custom coding something to do that. It is more of a basic sort of straightforward. It's yeah. it's one to one kind of deal. Unfortunately, we haven't found anything sort of bolt on that, that accomplishes that. Maybe we'll build it and make it available. Plug this huh? Dynamic galleries. They make a plug in. Variations, different colors, sort of stuff. Okay. If you want to send a send a tweet out or something, then that that would be great. Do you have any experience with Rapidity? Uh, it's a module that connects, for example, your QuickBooks and your uh, WooCommerce together and your shipping. Yeah, we we have actually done QuickBooks integration with uh, one of our sites, um, Curly Girl Designs, and it seems to work pretty seamlessly for them. Where the there's an export connection between the orders that come up in WooCommerce and then it boots them out to your uh, QuickBooks for uh, processing and payment. So, and tracking, obviously, and all of that. Is it direct or is there another uh, plugin in the middle of the two of those two? No, it's, it's direct. There's, so it's WooCommerce and then the bolt-on for, I forget the name of it. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, there's like two or three of them out there. Um, but it does, it, it forces out the uh, transactional uh, data information to QuickBooks for, for cataloging. Web, web Jolly brings it their own interface. Yeah, I'm glad that we haven't used that one.